This is Julie Green. If you're unfamiliar, she is a Trump-supporting prophet, basically. She's a prophet of Trump, if you will. She believes that Trump is, like, anointed by God to fulfill some special role, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's the idea. Well, she comes out here and gives prophecies from God himself about Donald Trump and about the deep state and how they're going to fall and blah, blah, blah. So I want to listen to what Julie Green has to say here. While we listen to what she says, we're going to play uh, Metroid Fusion. Should just be in the background. Won't bother you too much if you never played it before. And uh, yeah, let's listen to this absolute unhinged nutter buttery, shall we? Why does she have a bowl of balls in the background? That's a good question. That is a weird thing to have in the background of this, right? A bowl of balls. That's a big bowl, too, of, of balls. Those balls are very large. Interesting. Did you know that all of us in the United States of America that are awake right now? Awake meaning, you know, QAnon her. If we would just stand up and we would all push back and we would all fight and we would not be intimidated and we would not be in fear, can you imagine the fear that would bring to these people the establishment? They have nothing to fight against us. There is not a big enough army that they have in their Washington establishment that's bigger, the American citizens, that is bigger than most people who are awake now, and they're definitely not bigger than our God who's on our side. She is convinced that QAnoners uh, compromise, or comprise like a massive subset of the population. She's convinced that the vast majority of America is made up of QAnoners. See, this is what happens when you get yourself in little bubbles, when you don't realize that there's stuff outside of the little world you've created for yourself. Now, I think myself, personally, and my chat, you guys, I'm sorry, and my viewers, you guys, you probably recognize that there are serious nutcases out there with problems, right? You don't have a problem recognizing that. Because you see it all the time. You hear it from your family members and all that other junk. You don't have this delusion that the world is all Biden supporters. It's entirely 100% Biden supporters or something like that. The way that Trump supporters have the delusion that the world is entirely made up of Trump supporters. I just find it really interesting that she has found herself in this t kind of this bubble like there's there's a difference between an epistemic bubble and an echo chamber right an epistemic bubble is you're on social media and all you really hear is family members talking about loving trump it's not that you have put yourself in that little bubble intentionally it's not that you know you don't go outside that bubble from time to time it's just that's what formed around you right an echo chamber is when there's some outside force, or even you personally, are enforcing this um, this bubble around you so that you don't talk to non-Trump supporters, for example. It's like one is enforced and one is just by happenstance, basically. She seems to be in an echo chamber. At worst, I'm at an epistemic bubble. I'm not even in an epistemic bubble. Like, I hear stuff from Trump supporters all the time. It just, it, it it blows me away that, oh my God, dude, I'm getting wrecked over here. It just blows me away that she is so convinced that the world around her is so in favor of her God Emperor. By like a margin of like 90%. She thinks 90% of the world is is you know, in favor of Trump. How did they get so isolated? We have to, like, put effort into making sure that we don't get to that point. Seriously. Insane. They don't want us to be known that we have more number. They don't want us to know that we are mightier. They don't want us to know that truth is on our side. They don't want us to know that they are afraid of us. Who is they? You don't have the truth, Julie. This is complete fabricated nonsense. And, and what was all that she said? Known that we have more number. They don't want us to know. We, they don't want us to know that we have more numbers, I guess she's saying. 
They don't want us to know that we comprise a, a larger subsection of society than any other demographic, I guess, is what she's trying to imply. That we are mightier. They don't want us to know that truth is on our side. They don't want us to know that they are afraid of us. So they intimidate and they bring great fear. Okay, then. Yeah, she said this about like this, she, this all started because she's talking about Pharaoh. She I don't know if this is true or not. She claimed that the Israelites, the ancient Israelites were more powerful than Pharaoh and Pharaoh knew that. And that's why he bullied the uh, Israelites. Who knows if that's accurate? Probably not if it's coming from Julie Green. But anyway, she's comparing herself, I guess, to the Israelites and comparing non-Trump supporters to Pharaoh. Fun fact for you, you know who the world like held up as the ultimate example of evil incarnate before Hitler came along? It was Pharaoh. They held up Pharaoh as the ultimate example of evil. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, I thought it was. We all need to start standing up. Having our voices heard. Pushing back. Again, holding the line and never surrendering to corrupt, illegitimate government and their power and their rule. They don't have it. It's an illusion. Uh, it's an illusion? Well, then why is it that QAnoners aren't in control right now, if that's the case, if it's an illusion? Why aren't there QAnoners in government all over the place? Why don't they control the vast majority of government if it's an illusion? Maybe it's because she lives in an illusion or delusion, if you will. When you steal an election, when it's fraudulent, you are not legitimate. So your power is not legitimate. Your laws are not legitimate. Everything against you. Of course, our Constitution is against them. Freedom. Uh, okay, so I guess she's talking about me, right? When she says them, I assume she's saying me because I am like, not a QAnoner, and I'm opposed to their worldview, basically. So the Constitution is against me, is what she's saying. Me personally. Okay. Justice. Uh, our Constitution is, is against me because it is in favor of freedom and justice, and apparently I'm not. All right. Go on. They are outnumbered. No. <laughs> I don't know who they is, but... Whoever it is, is not outnumbered by QAnoners. The American people need to know it. They need to know that God is on our side. They need to know that these people have nothing. You know, God could prove that. Like now. He could just show us that he is on the QAnoners side instantly. He could send a message to everybody's brains instantly, all at the same moment. I exist, and I am in favor of the QAnoners. It's all you'd have to do. I'd still want to check and make sure it wasn't some kind of, uh, you know, new advertising system that the military in invented or something. But, you know, that would be pretty convincing, I think. And what does he do instead? He speaks through Julie Green and tells her that Trump is going to win the 2020 election and then fails. That honestly doesn't seem like something God would do to me compared to our God. Now I want to keep reading in Exodus. This is something very, very important. Now I want to look up the something really quick because he used that word shrewdly. So, um, I want to see, and I want to read to you exactly what this means. If I don't, <laughs> uh, Miss type here. Hold on. Okay. I don't know what she's doing. I fat fingered it. Okay. Okay. Shrewdly in a way that shows sharp powers of judgment. And let's see here. Another meaning here. Having a showing an absolute sharp judgment in a uh, practical matter, sometimes at the cost of moral compromise. So I guess she's talking about the definition of the word shrewd, right? Since when did shrewd 
um, necessarily include moral compromise. I've never heard that before. Shrewd business, cunning or... Okay, all right. Shrewd business. I guess I can kind of see that. Um, uh, yeah, okay. I, I can accept that, I suppose. Oh, you know what else I wanted to play? I totally forgot about this. I want to play the new Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. Uh, definition of shrewdly in a wise or thoughtful manner. So this is, again... In Exodus chapter 1, verse 10, it says, Come and let us deal shrewdly in a way that shows sharp powers of judgment. That's what shrewdly is. Sharp powers of judgment. Okay, I suppose so. Sure. Come let us deal shrewdly with them. Unless they multiply more and should war befall us, they join our enemies, fight against us, and escape out of our land. He was, a free he was afraid he was going to his lose his slaves. And his money. I think she's talking about Pharaoh. Pharaoh is afraid he's going to lose his slaves. You know what's interesting to me, actually? You guys may not be aware of this. I don't know. But the pyramids were not built with slave labor, as it turns out. Everybody believes they were because they believe the Bible story about it. Not true. They were not built with slave labor. Interestingly enough, they weren't even built, well, some of them, weren't built when we had the wheel. Like, the wheel was invented after... The pyramids were constructed, some of them. That just blows me away, seriously. They had to drag the stones on sleds rather than putting them on wheels or whatever. Eventually, Egypt got their famous chariots and all that other junk, but it took a while. Money is power. Verse 11. So they set af or set over the uh, Israelites taskmasters to afflict and oppress them with increased burdens. And the Israelites built the Python and Ramesses as store cities for Pharaoh. Stop right there. What do you think they've been doing in this country? Uh, I don't know how this connects to anything. They've been doing it all around the world. They've set up taskmasters and oppress oppressors. So we are weakened in every area, mentally, physically, financially, are bodily what does that we're bodily oppressed is that what she said what does that mean they have done these things on purpose to weaken us because they know if we are weak and if we are sick and if we're full of fear and worry and anxiety and we're panicking all the time or we are fighting amongst them ourselves we're not going to fight them this is there's nothing new under the sun are you hearing what god is revealing to us this is Right, God's revealing it through Julie Green, of course. Nothing new. That's why he calls them the pharaohs of today. Look what also Pharaoh did. In verse 13, and the Egyptians reduced the Israelites to severe slavery. That's exactly what they have done to us. This is a physical slavery because of the sickness and disease they have purposely put all over the place. These things are all strategic. We know they're poisoning us in every single way they possibly can. What the hell is she talking about right now? I guess she's talking about like the COVID vaccine, right? Is that what she's referring to? Being poisoned by the vaccine? My God, dude. She lives in just th this bizarre delusional fantasy land where she's the victim of everything. They know We know what they're doing with the economy. You know what they're doing with the global governments and how they have faked it. And how I'd love to know who they is in this scenario. How they are using our laws and they're taking our freedoms. It's a slavery. We just didn't know that we were in it. Okay. I see your I'm a slave. And I counter you with if you don't know you're a slave, maybe you're not a slave. It's just a little bit... Um, God, what's the word I'm looking for? Just tacky? That's not even the right word. Tacky is not the right word for this. Disgusting, grotesque to compare yourself to somebody who was forced into working for somebody, giving their labor for free their entire lives. Mistreated. If they tried to run, they were fed to dogs. If they tried to run and they didn't manage to escape and they weren't fed to dogs then they'd be castrated sometimes, and other times they'd have this 
big collar put on them with spikes that came out to right here so that they couldn't sit down or or lay down. They had to come back to the house every night to get the collar removed so they could sleep. Oh, my God. Okay, this is not the kind of slave collar I wanted. Oh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Uh, yeah, here. This is what I was talking about right here. Yeah, this is a, an example of a collar that they'd put on slaves right here. They had to come back to have it removed so they could sleep at night. How absolutely whacked out is that? The degree of abuse and just horrific treatment that happened to these people is unexcusable, unforgivable. What's more, these slave owners were compensated by the government for their slaves. When they were freed, the government paid all of the slave owners for the slaves. And what did the slaves get? Did they get paid for their labor that they put in all those years? Of course not. They got nothing. They got to not expect to have this collar put on their neck anymore every night. Still happens from time to time when the Ku Klux Klan runs through town and doesn't like the fact that somebody is there when they shouldn't be or something. But at least they don't have to sit in bed at night worrying about whether or not their master is going to put this, this collar on them. Anyway, so Julie Green says that she is a slave and she didn't even know it. Go on. With the global governments and how they have faked it and how they are using our laws and they're taking our freedoms. It's a slavery. We just didn't. Slavery, totally. She didn't know it. It was slavery. She just didn't know it yet. Okay. Know that we were in it. They have done so many corrupt things in our government that people have no idea what's all been done. That what I just did on Metroid Fusion, really, really difficult to do. Damn. It, getting uh, turned around and running back is just as difficult. But, oh, well, it's a speed running tactic. It's not really useful otherwise. That's why God said there's going to be a shock and an awe once we find out everything that they have done against us for over 100 years in this nation alone. We have not. For over 100 years. Interesting. Not really been a free country. It's been an illusion that we have been free. Oh, and what freedoms do you not have? that turns you into a slave what freedoms have been taking taken from you and replaced with an illusion of freedom specifically tell me what they are this is seriously wrong this is wrong and it's an embarrassment that she is comparing herself to slaves right now jesus christ dude i'll tell you what i'm at a save point i might as well pull up let's go pikachu why not right but we haven't been why do you think they have to spy on us with our cell phones or our TVs or every other way that they, sh they, they spy on us. Uh, I'm sorry. She thinks that they're spying on us with our TVs. I actually know where this came from. This is a conspiracy theory created by somebody who turned their TV to a channel and saw a picture of themselves as they were moving. I don't even know if it's true. It was probably fabricated to freak people out. Why is this not connecting all of a sudden? with their algorithms and everything else they do. They want to know every move. They want to know how we think. They want to know our weaknesses. They want to know our strengths. They want to know these things to take us down. And this is not conspiracy. These people do this stuff. No, it is conspiracy. You live in a conspiracy reality. They are afraid. Who is they again? And did I just reset the game? Oh my God, dude, this... This game is hard to figure out here. Satan has always gone after children. He's always gone after God's people. Satan's always gone after children. She believes, of course, that like the elites in the world are drinking children's blood and stuff. To lessen them in number. This is nothing new. Look what they've done with inflation. Look what they're doing with our border. This is all strategic. This is all things to stop us from knowing who we are and pushing back and getting our nation back, getting our freedoms back, and overtaking these rogue governments. We have to know that they're, they have a plan. Pharaoh had a plan. Again, I don't know who they is, but okay. So we know his plan. We just read it in Exodus chapter 1. Now, let's see God's. 
Exodus chapter 3. So again, God's people had no idea that Pharaoh feared them. Why do you think in these last three or four years how bad things have gotten? And how bad have things gotten in the last three years? She's talking, I think, basically since the 2020 election, is what she's saying. Um, it's been longer than three years, but roughly that's basically what she believes, I guess. Um, because, of course, you know, God wanted Trump to be the president again, and somehow Biden, a human, stole that from him. Even if Biden wasn't a human, how could he have possibly, you know, as Satan, how could he undo what God wanted? Like, none of it makes any sense. For us, they made it more severe. Oh, they also brought death on the scene. Again, nothing new. What are they talking about now? Another disease or virus. They're talking about these things. Why? Who? Who's talking about another virus? I don't remember this. I mean, there are always viruses floating around. It's it's constant. There's no like that's the nature of humanity. We are susceptible to viruses. But there isn't like a hundred year pandemic happening, a new one right now. What is she even going on about right now? Fear. Fear can control. Fear can control. And that's how they do it. Let's see what God says in Exodus chapter three and verse seven. And the Lord said, I will surely, I have surely seen the affliction on my people who are in Egypt, have heard their cry because they're taskmasters and oppressors, for I know their sorrows and sufferings and trials. Verse eight. I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the power of the Egyptians to bring them up out of that land to a land that's large and good and flowing with milk and honey, a plentiful into the place of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Prezerite, the Hivite, and the... This is from a really old era she's talking about here. Um, I mean, none of this stuff actually happened. This is all fabricated. Moses wasn't even a real person, but this is from ancient, ancient history. This is supposed to be from like before 1000 BCE. We're talking somewhere in the range of um, 1200, I think. I could be wrong on that. I'm pretty sure that's roughly when it's from. Although the book of Exodus was written down around 500 BCE, not 1000 or, or whatever. I mean, the earliest books in the Bible were written down around that time, 500. It's between 6 and 200 BCE. Jubicite. Verse 9, now behold, the cry of the Israelites have come to me, and I have seen how the Egyptians oppress them. Verse 10, come now, therefore, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring forth my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. That was God's plan. So Pharaoh's plan was to enslave God's people, to destroy God's people, oppress them, enslave them to the point of bondage where they would never fight back, and they would never get out. And his nation would keep growing and stronger and stronger and stronger why they were like why did god allow this to happen in the first place i don't understand and yeah these controls are really really frustrating the camera i can't look backwards that's really annoying okay growing weaker weaker and weaker but god saw this he heard the cries of his people and he said i am going to deliver them out so God has seen this oppression that we've been going through. He has seen these taskmasters. He's been seeing the uh, this bondage. He's been seeing all the things that they're doing, all the damage they're causing against. Then why isn't he fixing it? Us, our freedoms, and our and the justice system, what they're doing in our nations all around the world. And God says, I'm going to deliver you out because that's God. God is a delivering God. His, he is the great I am. He delivers. He delivers. Okay, well, any, any five minutes now, right? We're waiting. Now, verse um, God, uh, verse 15, Exodus chapter 3, verse 15. God said also to Moses, This shall you say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and by this name I am to be remembered to all generations. What was that name? The Great I Am. That was in verse 14. The Great I Am. To all generations, we were supposed to know that name. We're supposed to know that name now. Remember, God's been telling us to earnestly remember. That means take it seriously, that the great I am, who he is, what he has done. 
and what he's going to do. He is a covenant keeping God. He is a deliverer. He's a savior. He is our redeemer. He is everything that we need. And so we need to take that seriously. We need to earnestly remember that. Dude, I'm really bad at this. I'm sorry. Give me a second to try to figure this out. There we go. Got it. Okay. It <laughs> took me a second, but I got it. So if you go to um, verse 17, I have declared that I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of, and it names the lands again, and verse 19, and I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless forced to do so, No, not by a mighty hand. God knew <sighs> Pharaoh would not let his people go unless forced to do so. It is such an American thing to read the books, book of Exodus when Jews were escaping from Egypt and compare it to Donald Trump saving us from blood drinking evildoers or whatever. Isn't that like an American thing? I, I guess there are nutcases all over the place. God knows that these people will not let us go unless they are forced to do so. And God is going to force them. He is going to cut them off. He is going to force them to let us go because God has spoken those words. Let my people go. And those words are still going forth today. And there's nothing the enemies of almighty God can stop those wor words from coming to pass or to stop the almighty God from delivering us. Okay, well, that's what she said about 2020 also. That's what she said when Trump was running for president in 2020. God wants this. This will not end well for Joe Biden. He's going to be put in prison and blah, 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 blah. Trump is going to be installed as a dictator for the rest of, you know, eternity. And here we sit. Trump didn't even take the presidency. He didn't even win. I don't know about you. This is exciting to me. <laughs> This is exciting to me to know that we serve this God and he is the same God. He's the same God who saved this nation in a day. Uh, what is she talking about? God saved this nation in a day. What? He saw the plan of Pharaoh. He saw what they were doing. And he said, I have a plan. God sees what's been done to us and he has a plan. Even though God's people had no idea God's plan. They, it looked like their lives were getting so much more severe, so much more harsh. It looked so wor much worse. And they had no idea that God was about to take them out of everything that they were experiencing. So God is going to save them from everything they've, they've been experiencing. Okay, well, any minute. J still waiting, sitting here waiting. You know, this woman just blows me away. Let me find a really good clip from her. Um, all right, we got a few clips. Check this one out. Adam Schiff, how shifty you are. This is uh, mid-August 2022, by the way. A weasel, a rat. You stole this nation out and formulated plans to throw out my son from his rightful position as president. You thought you were so clever and couldn't be caught. Well, I will shine my spotlight on you and all will see the proof of your disgusting acts against my son any five minutes now again this is like two years old at this point okay well year and a half still waiting the true president and also your part in selling my nation to china for your protection um adam schiff did that i thought they believed that joe biden did that like what is happening check this one out this is another good one this is uh about bill clinton Another Clinton secret and scandals are about to be exposed and it will explode in the airwaves. A whistleblower is coming and this will not be held back, suppressed or ignored. I told you my children, the nowadays Ahab and Jezebel will go down just like the ones in my word. Justice is being served and you will see them receive it on center stage. You will see Bill Clinton die. Oh, interesting. Because the angel of death will soon pass by. And this is uh, coming up on two years old. What does soon mean to this woman? Saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. My God, dude. Here's, uh, you know what? Let me show you a different one. Hold on. Okay, yeah, here we go. Here we go. This is Julie Green talking with Eric Trump. Check this one out with Eric Trump here. These all three of the next ones were from early December 2022. So years old at this point. 
I grew up wiring buildings with electricians, pouring concrete, doing tile work. Eric Trump, uh, famous for being a blue collar worker. You know, running HVAC, you know. You mean HVAC. It's HVAC, not HVAC. What the hell are you talking about? Cutting down trees, running backhoes and stuff. Check this one out. Um, again, early December 2022. Just give this a listen. And so one of the things that God keeps saying to me over and over and over again, over and over, that he is going to um, bring back your father in unconventional ways. And he keeps saying that. And look at this dude smiling so ridiculously. Over and over and over again. We don't have to wait for a man's way of doing things like an election in order to bring somebody who is actually rightfully the elected president of the United States of America. I still call him president. I will never call Biden president because he's not. God, she's so cringy. Exactly how God's going to do it. He doesn't give me that type of information, uh, but he does give me the fact that what he is going to do is he's bringing him back. And I don't No, he doesn't give you any information. So how he's going to do that? I just know he well can't wait to see them fall and I can't wait to see what God is going to do with you. So if that's okay, I would, uh, love, I would love it. That's beautiful. She, she's asking him if she can pray over him now. And, and, and my okay. wife, I, I believe it 100%. <laughs> and she's so happy about that. Oh, he believes my delusions. She, He's affirming them for me. Okay. I want to pray. So heavenly father, right now in the name of Jesus, we just lift up Eric and we lift up his entire Trump family to you, father God. We just want to praise you. We want to thank Jesus Christ, dude. This is so cringy and painful and sad. Check this one out. Is thank you for also standing up and thank you for standing up for, you know, the Lord and Christianity and just religious freedom in general. I mean, something that is massively attacked right now. And it's it's something that I'm actually pretty religious freedom is massively attacked right now. Okay. Convinced. I I'm gonna get hit for saying this, but he's gonna get hit for it. Coming out of Obama, um, where you know, we were losing massive amounts of religious liberty in this country. I mean, massive amounts. Mm -hmm. you, you could hardly say Merry Christmas without being like shunned because you might offend somebody who was. That did not happen. This is a delusional fantasy. And, true. You know. No, not true. What are you talking about? Christian or believe. I mean, it was crazy. I'm not sure if, if, if you know, organized religion would not be what it is right now um, if it wasn't for Donald Trump. And he made. Mm -hmm. You know, like is it weird to anybody else that he refers to his dad by his first and last name? Why didn't he just say it wouldn't be what it is today without my dad? Why does he call him Donald Trump? That's weird, right? A lot of people are, well, is he is he a religious guy? Yeah, he's a religious guy. And he no, he's not. I think Trump is our first atheist president. Uh, you know what? Maybe Obama was the first atheist president. Uh, I don't believe for a second that Donald Trump is or ever was religious. We do have um, his old fixer guy, you know, um, Michael Cohen is his name. He quoted Trump as saying that he loved the scam that, that televangelists were running on their audience. He doesn't believe any of this. Might not have worn it on his shirt sleeve the way that certain politicians do often. Oh my God, doesn't wear it on his shirt sleeve the way politicians, dirty, evil, ugly politicians... He doesn't have to go around being flashy about his beliefs. Like, come on, man. Times, unfortunately, and I, this again sounds terrible, but but for votes, um, there's probably no one that's done more for religious freedom than him. And uh... just a joke, dude. Anyway, that's that's the Julie Green we're dealing with right now. Verse 20. This is still Exodus 3. So I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in it. And after that, he will let you go. I'm wondering why God didn't just not send them there in the first place. Shouldn't we be able to measure God's effects on the world? It seems to me that we should be able to look at statistics and determine if Trump supporters are doing better than anybody else or Jews or Christians or whatever, right? We should be able to determine if God is involved in any way. Oddly, there's absolutely no difference. In fact, a lot of the time, you know, Trump supporters or Christians are doing worse in some situations. When people involve their religion and their politics and stuff, 
in something like work or whatever, it invariably, well, commonly it ends poorly for him. These people are just absurd. Anyway, let me know what you think about this person in the comments. I think she's ridiculous. And I don't think she's ever going to come back to reality, truthfully. I think she's stuck there forever.